Every year, the AGS Honors and Awards Committee deliberate to select the finest examples of geographical or geospatial research, scholarship, or service, and recommend they be awarded appropriate medals by the AGS Council. We began a tradition nine years ago to recognize these examples of excellence at our annual symposium. It is our honor to do so again today. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated, and I ask the president of AGS, Dr. Marie Price, to come to the stage and convene our honors and awards ceremony. Marie? Thank you, John, and this is always a happy part of the program. Dr. Bullard, Dr. Marston, distinguished participants of the American Geographical Society Fall Symposium, AGS counselors, fellows, faculty, friends, members of Columbia University community and honored guests. We are pleased that you're joining us this afternoon in the presentation of three American Geographical Society medals. The medals include the George Davidson Medal for Exceptional Achievement in Research for Exploration in the Pacific Ocean or the Lands Bordering Therein, to be awarded to Dr. James Baker. The John E. Gould Medal to honor those who advance, uh, exhibit the highest ethical standards in the practice of geography, to be presented to Dr. Robert Bullard and the Alexander and Elsa Melibin Medal for distinguished work on the dynamic relationship between human culture and natural resources to be presented to Dr. Sally Marston. The Society awarded its first medal in 1896. Since then, 10 medals have been created and nearly 200 people have received this honor. The medals were created to recognize excellence and were awarded to individuals who expanded geographic knowledge through research and exploration, pioneered new geographic technology, and used geographical thinking to influence policy and advance social justice. Many medalists are from the United States, but nearly half are from other countries. Through the awarding of medals, AGS has recognized astronauts, explorers, cartographers, inventors, researchers, change makers, and world leaders. Today, our honors and awards ceremony is a special one because we have two longtime members and benefactors to the American Geographical Society who are central to the medals we are awarding this afternoon. At this time, I would like to invite Mrs. Elsa Melamid and Mr. John Gould to join me on stage. Let me tell you a little bit about our presenters. Um, Mrs. Elsa Melamid was born in Vienna, Austria and sent to England as a child in 1939 in the Kinder Transport Program to escape Nazi persecution. She lived in England, went to college in Australia, and later worked at the New School for Social Research in New York City for many decades. With her husband, Dr. Alexander Melamid, a geographer, the couple traveled the world. The Melamids have been part of the AGS family for nearly five decades. In 2002, after Alexander's death, Elsa established the Alexander and Elsa Melamid Medal. A woman of many talents and philanthropic passions, she designed the medal that we are giving today. John Gould, a native New Yorker, chairman emeritus and current treasurer of AGS has worked tireless, tirelessly on behalf of the society. A partner of Thompson Hine LLP until his retirement, he has been actively involved in the working of the society since 1976 when he was enlisted to help in the negotiation of moving the AGS library uh, from New York City to the University of Wisconsin at Milwaukee, where it lies today. John and his wife, Bonnie, are a couple committed to service, engaged in numerous philanthropic efforts in New York. The John Gould Medal is our newest medal, established in 2021, and it was created to honor John's principled service, not just to AGS, but to the society in general, and funded by Elsa Melamid. So 
applause. The first award we'll make this afternoon is the George Davidson Medal, and I'll call upon Dr. Deborah Popper, Chair of the AGS Honors Committee, and herself a medalist, as well as Dr. Chris Chucker, Chairman of AGS, to join me as Deborah will read the citation. Thank you, Marie. It is a pleasure to be up here with these people and with the people who were to join us next. It is my honor and my pleasure to read the citations honoring these people. Now, our first medalist, D. James Baker, who's getting the Davidson Medal, is unable to be with us today due to an illness in the family. But nonetheless, we do want to read his citation and, and read his response to us. So let me begin with that. Today, we honor D. James Baker with the George Davidson Medal. This medal, established in 1946, was to honor Davidson, a towering figure in oceanic research. During his career, spanning the years 1845 to 1911, he improved navigational instruments led ambitious oceanic expeditions and established new programs. His time out on the water off the coast of California and the Pacific Northwest improved the knowledge and maps of the coastal contours in ways that kept countless seagoers from harm. He went on to found the University of California's geography program and from there worked constantly and instructively to improve geographical knowledge across academia, government, and business. Baker, too, was a towering figure. He also developed new oceanographic techniques, has done path-breaking research, and created and run important institutions. He has pushed into new areas, generating better knowledge, and widened the public's understanding of the oceans, climate, and Earth systems. Baker's contributions are as distinguished by their scientific brilliance as by their social and institutional importance. Early in his career at Harvard, he discovered a new oceanic fluid instability. With A.R. Robinson, he made the first laboratory model of the equatorial ocean circulation and developed and patented a new deep sea pressure gauge. He later served as president of the Joint Oceanographic Institutions where he managed its international ocean drilling program and guided new programs in satellite oceanography. He co-founded the Ocean Oceanography Society and was its first president. Appointed Under Secretary of Commerce and Administrator of the National Ocean Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, by President William Clinton, he is still the longest serving administrator of NOAA, an achievement that speaks to his ability to work with complex science, politics, and bureaucracy to get things done. He guided the modernization of the National Weather Service, started new climate forecasting services, and merged the civil and military environmental satellite systems. He put in place much of the infrastructure essential to begin to gather the information needed to manage the risks of climate change. He dramatically increased funding for fisheries and coastal zone management, updated and expanded mapping and charting of the nation's coastal waters. He co-chaired the President's Global Disaster Information Network Council and the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources and served on the President's Council on Sustainable Development. As the U.S. Commissioner to the International Whaling Commission, he led the efforts to establish in the Southern Ocean the largest whale sanctuary ever put in place. He was the co-chair of the Environmental Working Group of the U.S.-Russia Binational Commission that led to the first release of classified Russian environmental data. After NOAA, Baker became president and CEO of the Academy of Natural Sciences in Philadelphia, where he established new research programs and created a popular town square public discussion forum to discuss topics like sustainability and global warming. 
He joined the Clinton Foundation as senior strategic advisor for the climate initiative with special attention to developing, to developing countries forestry programs, where he's worked to create open source tools for, to monitor resource use, reduce carbon dioxide emissions while alleviating poverty. Baker's qualities of mind and character have given him a major role in preparing us to face the ongoing and rising threats to the planet. Therefore, for these reasons and more, on behalf of its grateful members, worldwide scholars, and all who recognize the importance of excellence in geographical research and exploration, the American Geographical Society honors Dr. D. James Baker by presenting him with the George Davison Medal on this, the 17th day of November in the year 2023 in New York City. So we congratulate him and wish he were here. And I, 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 actually, you have, the, do you have the medal? I think you, no, no, okay. Then let me just read what Dr. Uh, Baker wrote when he wrote to say he could not attend. Thanks very much to the American Geographical Society for honoring me with the George Davidson Medal. I'm sorry that I am not able to attend the ceremony, but I want you to know that I am deeply touched by this recognition of my work. Like Davidson, I've always had a keen interest in the ocean. I grew up on the edge of the Pacific Ocean in Long Beach, California, and did my first expedition to the Alaskan coast on an old US Army freighter. Since then, I've measured ocean currents in the tropical Pacific, made the first deep sea pressure measurements in the Drake Passage, and explored uninhabited equatorial Pacific Islands. Later, as NOAA administrator, I joined an expedition up the coast of Chile. I've seen the largely unexplored Pacific Ocean reveal many of its secrets with thousands of Argo floats and wall-to-wall -wall satellite measurements. In the 1970s, NOAA ship Davidson and I were both stationed in Seattle. The Davidson was mapping features of the Pacific coast while I was helping NOAA put together plans to learn the role of the ocean and climate. Although that ship has now been retired to the Nigerian offshore oil fields, the need to adapt to a changing climate will ensure that there will always be a role for, for explorers and scientists like George Davidson. Thanks again to the American Geographical Society for this award. So again, I think we are honored to honor him. Next, I'd like to ask Dr. Robert Bullard to join us on stage. Okay, and, and please let me read the medal, the citation. The John E. Gould Medal, the American Geographical Society's newest medal established in 2021 by Ilse Melamed to honor longtime um, AGS chair, John Gould, um, brings ethics to the center of our concerns. It recognizes exemplary work, whether academic or applied, that addresses the ethical implications of geographical or geospatial technologies and decisions. This year's Gould awardee, Robert Bullard, has been a powerful figure in raising our perceptions of environmental inequalities and holding us all to account. Bullard, distinguished professor at the Barbara Jordan Mickey Leland School of Public Affairs at Texas Southern University is widely considered the father of environmental justice. <laughs> As he has written, communities are not all created equal. Despite the nation's promise of equal rights to health and safety, extreme racial inequalities persist, 
with devastating effects, economic and social, for health and safety. Geography must address this. It must ask how and for whom our environment was shaped, who decides, who benefits, and how those harmed can be made whole. The 1970s environmental movement paid surprisingly little attention to inequities when Bullard was a young professor at, Georgia's, at, at Texas Southern. A request from his wife, a lawyer, attempting to stop the siting of a landfill in a black middle class neighborhood set him on the path to changing the environmental field. He and his students began amassing data on where Houston's waste sites were located. The geography was stark. They were in communities of color. Buller went on to investigate and to document this pattern across the South, culminating in his influential 1990 work, Dumping in Dixie, now in its third edition, and a foundational work in environmental justice. He was the first, this was the first major monograph of environmental racism on environmental racism, linking hazardous facility locations with historical patterns of segregation. The book was part of an awakening that included the 1982 Warren County, North Carolina protest to stop the dumping of PCBs, the powerful report from the United Church of Christ's Commission for Racial Justice that documented disparities in Harris's waste siting, and then dumping in Dixie the work that provided the intellectual underpinnings for the field of environmental justice. A movement, a field, and a quest for justice that impelled President Bill Clinton to sign Executive Order 12898, Federal Actions to Address Environmental Justice in Minority Populations, Low-Income Populations, in 1994, that required federal agencies to attend to the environmental impacts of their decisions on minority and low-income populations. Buller didn't stop there. He has continued to write, lecture, advocate. He served on numerous boards, including the first National Environmental Justice Advisory Council, as well as the current one. Even as some things have improved, the patterns persist. Social and planning arrangements too easily offload locally unwanted land uses onto minority and low-income communities. High growth places like Atlanta reproduce inequities as the population expands into a sprawling and, uh, and metropolis. Emergency disaster relief reproduces the inequities that preceded the disaster. Bullard's awards are numerous with recognition from universities governmental and quasi-governmental and non-governmental, environmental and health organizations. In his 18 books and numerous articles, sold, co-authored and edited or co-edited, he has given voice to many in the environmental justice movement and prompted its expansion to other marginalized communities. We celebrate Bullard giving us the intellectual structure to hold our society to account. Therefore, for these reasons and more, on behalf of its grateful members, worldwide scholars, and all who recognize the importance of an F excellence in geographical research and exploration, the American Geographical Society honors Professor Robert Bullard by presenting him with the John E. Gould Medal on this, the 17th day of November in the year 2023 in New York City. Congratulations. And Now I invite you to take the microphone and lead us on forward. Thank you very much. It's really an honor uh, and a privilege to be on this stage. As a sociologist, an environmental sociologist, and I tell people I am a sociologist, but I don't do dead white man sociology. I do what scientifically call kick-ass sociology. I want to thank the 
AGS and the benefactors, Gould and Melamed, for the generous uh, support for having a medal uh, named after John Gould and affix affixing my name to that medal. I have tried to uh, be a scholar, researcher, writer, and an activist that tries to do what Dr. King said long ago, is that the arc, the moral arc of the universe is long, but it tends to bend toward justice. And I would hope that my work and working with others would help bend that arc. And that using maps, charts, geography would, would assist in getting us there quicker. I've been doing this work for 44 years, but today we are in an emergency, a crisis called global warming, climate change. We don't have 44 years like I've been doing this work. We have to bend that curve and make sure that no community somehow is left out and left behind when we come up with climate, real climate solutions, not false solutions and not cover-ups and not somehow um, hiding truths. I'm a strong believer in using research data science to address real problems. And I think when we work together across various multiple disciplines, we can solve many of our problems. And I think understanding, last point, hope it's takeaway point, is that having the data, having the science, has never been enough to impact policy and make change. We must marry facts, data, science, and policy with action. Action from the bottom up, from those communities that are most impacted by climate change and other environmental challenges, to be in those rooms, at those tables, when dec decisions are being made to speak for themselves. That's when we can make real change in addressing these disparities and these inequities and make all communities count. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll just go off. So now I invite Dr. Sally Marston to join us on the stage. So, in 2002, Ilsa Melamed created the Alexander and Ilsa Melamed Medal to recognize outstanding work on the dynamic relationship between human culture and natural resources. Mrs. Melamed knew then that the fate of the planet and humanity lay in making culture and resources work better together. This year's Melamed medalist, Sally Marston, Regents Professor Emerita at the University of Arizona, is hard at work on that task. Marston can be described as a geographer's geographer. She is a political geographer, theorist of space and place, with a commitment to social justice. She has written much and well, and been an important participant in all the institutions of the field. Her writings take on geography's classic issues. Her most cited article, published in Progress in Human Geography, is a discussion of scale. She addresses the prevailing theoretical discussion of the concept, critiques them, and insists that subjectivity is central to its understanding. While abstract as a concept, scale has immediacy affecting people's lives, activities, spaces, relationships, and self-images. 
Hers is an interesting discussion with particular sensitivity to the more marginalized of society's members, issues of gender and where women's lives fit into spatial relationships. Keep th reading through her writing and you find that theme addressed consistently and thoughtfully. She could well receive a medal from AGS for all that kind of work. But natural resources was not so much a part of, the, of what she was doing, and the Melamed Award has it as a major concern. So I have to move on to what Dr. Marston has been doing more recently. Over a decade ago, Marston's work took on a new cast when a former student approached her to do an independent study, creating a school garden in a Tucson Title I school. From one student and one school, the effort now known as the Community and School Garden Program has grown to encompass all Title I schools in the region, serving thousands of college students as interns, K-12 students, teachers, and community members, all active developers of the program. It has transformed learning, STEM heavy, it has infused ecological knowledge, other sciences, math into everyday life, and learning at these schools. At least as important, it has changed people's relationship to their space and place, and given a sense of control over physical, social, and even political environments. Those involved may learn about indigenous seeds for food or health, irrigation systems, drought responses, experimental methods and measurement. They also learn about and learn to value their very local places, questions, devices for answering them, and themselves, and their ability to define themselves in their spaces. The model has generated interest and adoption around the world. Marston, co-founder of this project and now consultant, describes her work on this as a labor of love. The transformative work exemplifies the ambition of the Melamed Metal. It powerfully changes the relationship between human culture and natural resources, and strikingly, this for a particularly vulnerable population. Describing the significance of the project, Marston, the social critic, says, we need to prefigure the politics and social relations we want to see. That's what this project does. Writer Hector Tabar calls on us to, quote, dedicate our energy and our intellects to create new ways of being in the world. That's what Marston did. So therefore, for these reasons and more, on behalf of its grateful members, worldwide scholars, and all who recognize the importance of excellence in geographical research and exploration, the American Geographical Society honors Professor Sally Marston by presenting her with the Alexander and Ilsa Melamed Middle on this, the 17th day of November in the year 2023 in New York City. Congratulations. <laughs> and now I invite Sally for you to come say, share your wisdom. Good afternoon, and thank you to the AGS for inviting me to be part of the 2023 um, uh, uh, Society Symposium, and of course to receive the Alexander and Elsa Melamed Medal. I am humbled and very much honored to receive the medal and proud to be part of the lineage of the exceptional Melamed Medal awardees. And I feel lucky to be carrying on a research tradition of which Alexander Melamed was a key figure, as well as the community orientation which Ilsa Melamed continues to champion. Indeed, I am both surprised and delighted by the award, but I'm also grateful 
grateful to the committee who chose me for this award, to the Melamids for designating such a medal, and grateful to have had the opportunity to take the research I have generated as an academic geographer to make an impact on the community in which I live by connecting culture and the environment in practical ways. While many of my colleagues, as Deborah mentioned, in geography might know me as a feminist theorist, a cultural geographer, a political geographer, um, over the last dozen years, I've also worked more happily than I ever could have imagined to develop an experiential education program for pre-K through university students. The, the pre-K through 12 children and youth with whom I work attend Title I schools, schools that have a high percentage, mostly 80 to 85 percent low-income students. To learn, this program helps them to learn through school gardens and the natural surroundings of their campuses. The program trains university students also, as, classroom, as well as classroom teachers, in 70 low-income schools in the 40,000 student Tucson Unified School District. Um, as many of you might know, Arizona is second to Mississippi as the least well-funded of all the states in the United States. Um, but the model helps, the model we developed um, uses the garden classroom to address social and emotional learning and development as its central feature. But it also engages K through 12 students with a whole range of academic subjects from art and science, both Western science and community knowledge and indigenous science and nutrition and not just healthy eating but eating and preparing food that reflects deep cultural traditions. We put that knowledge to work to comprehend and even address globally critical issues with these students, such as climate change, inequality, physical and mental health, and social justice. And perhaps equally important among the benefits of garden-based learning is that it cultivates imagination and joy joy in young people who are encountering and sometimes even generating new knowledge and who are encouraged to bring the wisdom of their families and their community into the learning space of the school. My one disclaimer with respect to this award is that I have not accomplished this work alone. I have the distinct pleasure of working with an extraordinarily creative and amazing team of individuals dedicated to uplifting the wide community we serve. I accept this model on their behalf as well, this medal on their behalf as well. I said earlier that I was surprised to be nominated for this medal. My surprise is based on my believing that my school garden work was not well known among my academic colleagues. I learned, however, that my somewhat extracurricular investment in community growth and development through geographic knowledge and practice was actually one of the most important reasons for my nomination. And I find that fact to be utterly delightful. To me, teaching and learning with five, 10, 16-year-olds, with freshmen, university uh, students or graduate students, with educators and parents and with community knowledge keepers is perhaps the most satisfying work I have experienced in my entire teaching, research, and learning career. To conclude, thank you again for this extraordinary honor and for recognizing that learning from our communities can be powerful and transformative as we collaborate um, to address the human environment challenges of our generation and generations to come as they unfold in real places and landscapes among real human beings, many of whom are children. And if you ever are in Tucson, Please plan on visiting me, and I would be happy to take you on a tour of the work that school gardens can do. Thank you all very much. Thank you to the ADS.